how's it going everyone in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how i made this amazing wooden kicker ramp that i plan on using for my dirt jumper and what's even cooler about this ramp is i made it 100 percent for free out of materials that were either trash picked or given to me and uh, fasteners that were recycled and salvaged from old job sites in the past so stick around you guys and i'll show you how i done it all right so these are the boards we're going to be using these are two by eights that were removed from an old deck that was on the side of a house uh, i got these all for free the only thing is i'm going to have to remove all these nails which is no big deal small price to pay for some free wood so i'm going to go ahead and use those for the basic structure and i'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of these and drag them up to the garage all right so what i'm doing now is i'm pulling all these nails out as you can see i've already got this board done and the way i'm going about it is i'm just taking a pair of vice grips here and i'm just gripping a nail you know as close to the board as i can do it bear with me i'm holding the camera while i'm trying to do this just kind of clamp it rock it back and forth until it breaks that's the easiest way i found to do it i've tried pulling them out with a hammer but these nails are so old and rusty more or less just rip the head off and then it more or less uh you know it makes them even harder to pull out so all right so what i'm doing now is i'm trying to figure out the radius of the jump that i want to make and how i'm figuring out the radius is i got a length of string pinned to the ground over there and I got my pencil tied to it. Now I'm trying to make this jump universal for BMX bikes, mountain bikes, and dirt jumpers or whatever. So I'm kind of making it sort of mellow. So I'm sticking with a seven and a half foot radius. You can feel free to make it however steep or you know mellow as you want. Typically a rule of thumb is however tall you're making it, you know, double that the radius. So if you're making a, a four foot tall uh, booter, eight foot's a nice mellow transition but like i said once you start cutting it in a little bit more it just steepens the transition a little more giving you more pop ultimately but like i said it's just simple as a piece of string in the ground pencil and as you're tracing with the pencil the string is going to naturally cause it to arc and draw you a perfect radius so i don't know if you see in this line here but i went ahead with seven and a half so I'll show you, I'm not gonna use this uh, sheet of OSB obviously, but uh, this is more or less just my, my template, if you will. So I'll explain to you what I'm doing now. All right, so you guys see what I got going on here. I basically got one of my boards laid out across my radius template. And basically I'm trying to figure out where I wanna line these boards up and where I wanna intersect the uh, second board that's gonna join in with here. Now the reason I'm doing this is because when you obviously I'm going to have to carve like a half moon or whatever if you want to call it that into this board here and every bit you carve into it you know it's just going to make this portion thinner and thinner now in the carpentry world they call these two by eights but the real measurement it's actually like, like seven and an eighth wide by like an inch and a half so um, you don't want to take out too much meat is what I'm saying. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it right here. Um, bear with me. I'm trying to do it holding the camera, but if, if I'm flipping the board up here, right? And you can see where the bottom of this lies right here in conjunction to what I would say the, the narrowest part of the transition there. So using the measurement, using the measuring tape, if I kept this board right here, I'd say at the narrowest part, I would be at about five inches. So I'm kind of liking where this is sitting right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and lean with it and rock with it and keep this board right there. And once I draw the radius in it, I'll just have to nibble that little bit out and this thing will still be five inches thick there, which will be plenty. And then I'll have to pretty much do the same over here and figure out where I want to intersect uh, this second board here. And you'll see what I got going on. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this handled and figured out, and I'll be back with you. All right, so I got my radius line transferred over to the board here. And as I measured out, like I said, it's right at five inches there. So I'm only going to be re removing, you know, two inches of that. So we'll be just fine. And how I'm going about cutting this is I'm using, like I said, I'm using old deck boards that are preloaded with a bunch of nails. So rather than using a circular saw or something like that, I'm just using a sawzall with a, uh, you know, basically a demolition blade in it, a blade that's capable of ripping through wood with nails in it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that handled. I'll be right back. 
All right, you guys, so I got the first form pretty much cut and pinned together right now, and I got uh, just some three inch deck screws pinning it together right now. And as you can see, by cutting those half moons into it, we were able to get our nice transition here out of our straight boards. So it's not hard, you just gotta, ain't nothing to it but to do it. But anyway, now I gotta just whip up another one of these and then we'll have our basic structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and handle that and I'll be right back. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I've got the two side formers made, our uh, transition radius. And uh, basically this is the fun part here where you get to step back and visualize it and determine just exactly how tall or how big you wanna go with this thing. Now, right here where this cut is, is right at the four foot mark. And that would make this entire thing four foot tall problem is with that and I could go the full uh, four foot but then I would need to make a pretty substantial landing to uh you know be able to go with that so I don't have that much dirt laying around so I'm thinking I've already been poking around with the measuring tape right here where my fingers at is 40 inches and right here is 36 inches and then I also got to take into uh, consideration that I plan on trimming those legs down a little more because my initial thought was to uh, basically just submerge it and bury it in the ground a little bit but then after I thought about it a bit I almost want to make it to where I can move it and adjust it backwards and forwards depending on how you know how froggy and how, how froggy I'm feeling and how big I want to go that day and plus I'll be able to like you know prop it up a little more steepen it out a little bit and you know just you don't want to have a super gnarly four inch transition from the ground to the jump you know it's like hitting a curb before you hit a jump so obviously i got to trim that down so like i said i'm just stepping back and figuring out how big i want to go with this thing but as you can see it's going to be pretty gnarly and then once you start you know triangulating and making you know bring the the base in and then bring the upright however like i said however tall you decide to make it I, i'm thinking i'm going to extend the base of it a little bit longer and then bring the upright up at an angle just to kind of make it to where it doesn't have you know a pivot point right there make it to where you know if you go super ham off of it it doesn't rock the you know it won't you don't have to worry about the the takeoff you know moving with it so anyway this is where I'm at now and I just got to go ahead and uh, like I said figure out how big I want to go with it and start piecing it all together I gotta grab some more boards and pull some more nails first though, but I'll be back. All right guys, so I pretty much got the basic form all set up and joined together. That weight is more or less just holding it to keep it from kind of teeter-tottering right now. But I got it all cut down. I ended up cutting it down to 36 inches, but then after I cut it down, I went ahead and trimmed the legs down to where I could get this, uh, you know, two by eight in between there. And it'll give it a much you know, less of a transition into the ramp, I'll be able to, you know, just dig or just add a little, push a little bit of dirt up to the lip of there. And I uh, won't have to worry about too big of a transition. But anyway, where I'm at now is I'm just go ahead measuring and seeing how I want to make these uprights. Cause like I said, I kind of want to pitch them downward and outward a little more just to kind of give the, uh, the jump a little more support. So as your, all your body weight is leaving the, uh, the takeoff there, it's not gonna make the ramp wanna, you know, rock and do that kind of thing. Granted, you know, this ramp's gonna be pretty heavy when I'm done with it, so I don't know if that would really be an issue anyway, but like I said, might as well engineer it into it while I'm doing it, because like I said, the more you kind of A-frame it out, the more stable it will be. But yeah, that's where I'm at now, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, measure and cut some uprights for it. I'll be back. All right, so I got both of my verticals cut pretty much clamped into place and like I said this thing is going to be really sturdy but before I go ahead and final screw these into place I'm going to go ahead and make another brace just to go in between here that way you know it's nice and solid up top here and then I'll go ahead and attach those and then we can like I said go on and focus on tying it together horizontally hey right, guys so we're running out of daylight here but as of now I got the basic shape of the ramp pretty much done and like I said this thing is freaking rocks rock solid sturdy and this is gonna be quite a little booter I think this is gonna be really fun it's just gonna whoop. 
Hell yeah. So like I said, all we got to do now is worry about, and we don't even necessarily probably have to, but I would like to run a couple of horizontals to tie all of these legs together horizontally. And then from there, it's just on to planking the takeoff. So we're almost done with it, you guys. Let's keep moving. All right, so I ran out of daylight, so I had to bring the ramp inside the garage, which no big deal there, but I got the uh, bottom legs all tied together, and that really made this thing rock solid sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of rock with what I got here. All I gotta do now is just continue to uh, deck the takeoff, and then we'll be done with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more of those uh, scrap boards I have laying around and start decking this thing. All right, guys, so I'm in the process of basically decking the takeoff now I'm, I'm just using more free boards that i've had laying around for a number of years and these actually came from uh, my barn when i first bought this house there was like a little dividing wall in my one of my outbuildings there and it was made out of these tongue and groove cedar boards here so when we demoed that wall to make more room i uh, kept all these boards around just because i knew someday i would think of something to do with them so anyway i said just using some of these and i'm uh laying them out and just kind of counting how many I need and I'm gonna leave a little maybe a one inch skip in between them now I could just tongue and groove and join it all but in the event you know it rains or snow laying on it as the snow melts I want to leave like a little gap just so as it melts it, it can uh, drip off of the board and not uh, get in between and stuff so but yeah basically what I got going on now is I'm just decking the board so I'm gonna go ahead and start screwing them in place. I'm gonna leave like a one inch gap, like I said, and then once I got it all planked all the way up, then I'm gonna go ahead and just trim the sides. So let's go ahead and knock this decking out real quick and finish this thing up. All right guys, so I got all my decking installed and sticking with the free 99 theme, I just went ahead and used this box of galvanized ring shank nails that I've had and laying around for a number of years from another job site from many, many years ago. And as you can see, it's all good to go. The only thing I had to really do was trim this top board here just because it was kind of overhanging the top of it just a little more than I liked it to be. So I trimmed it down a little bit on my table saw. But other than that, you know, I've been pretty much just eyeballing this entire thing as I've been building it. So um, as I've been applying the deck boards and more or less just been taking a uh, just a spare board to get my space, I've just been taking a piece of wood and kind of just sticking it in between all the gaps there and that'll give me my nice gap that I can go ahead and just kind of use to stagger them all the way up so now that I got them all decked and nailed down all I got to do now is just take my saws off and just trim the sides there and trim the sides there and then we're done so let's go ahead and do that all right guys so one of the last pieces of the puzzle is this here basically all this is just a piece of plywood with a little scab of wood attached to it and this is just gonna allow a nice smooth transition into the ramp so if i ever take the ramp urban sending or anything like that i can just add this piece there and it'll be a nice smooth transition all righty boys and girls so there you have it i got all the sides trimmed up and now it's completely done and it actually looks pretty sweet so um overall it just measured out to be just shy of 40 inches tall overall it's about six and a half feet long and 26 inches wide and i'd say it's about i haven't picked it up or anything but if i were to just guess on how much the thing weighs in total i'd say maybe about between 125 150 pounds so it's not too bad and the cool thing about it is this would actually fit in the bed of my pickup truck. So if I ever found like a cool urban spot that I wanted to session for a bit, it wouldn't take nothing to just throw that ramp in the bed of my truck and take it with and set it up. So that's pretty awesome. And um, you know, like I said in the beginning, this ramp didn't cost us a single dime. All it did was cost us a little bit of time. Um, all of those, all the A-frame and all the deck boards and all the fasteners was salvaged from previous job sites um these two by eights were from a deck that was removed from a house these uh one by six cedar planks that we used to deck the board that was an old dividing wall that was ripped down from my barn that was in the back and all this stuff all these nails and screws and stuff is all just leftovers and stuff that i've had kicking around for a number of years so like i said it didn't didn't cost us anything to do and uh, it really wasn't that hard. I didn't even really need to use a measuring tape. 
I only use the measuring tape to first off measure my the string for my radius, and then I use the measuring tape to pretty much determine how much meat I had left in the uh, in the in the upright in the in the radius in the transition boards. I guess you want to call them. But other than that, everything else was done by pretty much just eyeballing it, and I used nothing more than a sawzall. So like. Granted, I had to use a sawzall because I had this, you know, these worked boards that had a bunch of nails and stuff in them. But if this was all brand new wood and it didn't have any nails in it or anything, I could have used like a circular saw and all of my cuts would have been like precision and just everything would have been so beautiful. But I'm not too worried about it. This thing, like I said, is super sturdy the way it is. And I like the fact that it's a little rough around the edges and kind of janky because, you know, it seems to me like the janky ramps and the stuff like that that's just hastily thrown together just seems to have, you know, just seems to work better, you know, for some reason. When you when you overthink things and make everything all perfect and beautiful, it's almost, it's almost not as fun. So anyway, like I said, this is just a fun little project I had kicking around. And uh, I've been meaning to do this for a while because... I have the uh, the dirt jumps, and uh, now I, I plan on actually making a couple of these because, like I said, the cool thing about these is you don't have to worry about the weather, you know, changing the takeoff. You don't have to go out there and uh, maintain them as much. You don't have to worry about the winter breaking them down or anything like that. Every time you hit that lip, it will be consistent and it will be it will feel exactly the same as it did the time before and the year before the week before it, it should never change and worse come to worse if any of these boards end up cracking or whatever you can just pound them out and replace them with a new one so anyway you guys uh hopefully this one inspired you guys to go out and make something of your own and uh i wish i had a little more daytime so i can't wait to actually try this thing but we're gonna have to wait on that but in the meantime you know go out there and make one of your own because this wasn't hard to do. I'd say overall it took me about uh, four hours and I'd say the bulk of that was just trying to, you know, brainstorm and figure everything out. But once I had everything figured out, once I had my first uh, upright made, I was able to just make the duplicate real quick and just nail the rest of this stuff out in a matter of moments. So like I said, this really wasn't hard to do at all and uh, it was all free. So anyway, until the next one, signing out. Have a good night. All right, you guys, so just for scale, that's my dirt jumper, and this is the ramp. This thing is going to be fun. <laughs>